The presence of Almighty God is in us. With us everywhere we go. In every single conversation. In every single business dealing. In every single thought. In front of every single computer screen, in every dark room, in every quiet place, God is there. Yes. And that awareness should change the way we live. Amen. His continual presence in our life. And so Moses tells them very specifically here that God's presence should impact three areas of their life. And they're very specific uh, to the time in which they were living. But they have very practical applications for us today. He starts in the most important place and that's worship. So we should practice God's presence in worship. He starts there in verse 1, he says, uh, talks about people who should be excluded from the assembly, excluded from the worship service. Now again, this is going to sound harsh, but it sounds harsh because God takes this more seriously than we take it. And God had very specific rules because we have to remember that God was working in physical pictures. That with the people that from the physical mark of circumcision for the covenant, covenant to the way that they, they had certain instruments and things set up within the temple. Everything was painting a picture of redemption, the covenant, and the promise. And so he says that, that worship is about him and that we should take it very seriously. And so it's important that we remember that when we come to church, when we come to worship, specifically corporate worship, that this is not about us. Right. It's about him. Right. And we should, we should ask ourselves uh, important questions. You know, like a lot of times you'll hear, you know, we'll say, so what happened at church? And then we've got a kind of a normal list that we go through. What happened at church? Well, we got there and we had Sunday school and they had, they had the good donuts this week. They didn't have the crummy donuts and the coffee was good. And they sang two songs that I liked and one song that I don't like. And the message was good and the temperature was okay. I had to park kind of far away. But, and, and it's sort of just this running list. When the, the real question is very simple. It's how was church today? Either God was pleased or he wasn't. This is the question we should be asking about worship. Was God pleased or wasn't he? And we, in terms of him being pleased, was he pleased with me? Was God pleased with the heart that I brought into his presence today? Did I come into his presence with thanksgiving? Yep. With rejoicing and with praise? Yep. Did I come with my attention and affection and passions set on him or on me? Was my praise coming from a clean heart or from a heart that was stained with sin and bitterness and anger? What, was, I, was I listening to that sermon so that God could speak to me or was I trying to figure out who else in the room I was glad was here today because they needed that? <laughs> Did I treat that visitor? Did I welcome that brother? Was I, was I holding a grudge that caused me to give the cold shoulder to someone else? Was God pleased with me today? And when we begin to understand that coming to worship is about what we're offering him, not what he's giving us, it changes the way we worship. It changes the way we prepare for worship. It changes the way we engage in worship. It, we make sure that we're ready to do it. it. It's a heart that's excited to be here, not one that's itching to get out. Oh. One that says, I wish we could have stayed a little longer, not I wonder when this thing's going to be done. Yeah. It's all about the heart with which we come. And so some of these exclusions here, they're, they're for very specific reasons. I want to walk through them. The first verse there when it talks about emasculated by crushing or mutilation, he's basically, and I'm going to keep it PG, uh, but he's talking about eunuchs. And if you don't know what a eunuch is, a eunuch is a man that, uh, because of involvement in pagan worship, um, was, uh, was mutilated, did not have any of his reproductive organs, and I'll leave it there. And, and so this was a, a, an act of pagan worship. It was something that was done now. I am going to tell you a story that is a funny story, I think. Um, and there are certain stories, I've had this story for a long time. And there are just some stories you have to wait for the right moment to tell. And it's actually appropriate for this passage of scripture. When I was in, you're like, holy moly, where are we going? All right. <laughs> when I was in seminary, I went to seminary in Memphis, Tennessee. And it right on the line of Mississippi. And so I got some opportunities to go to Mississippi and preach. And one time I was going to the Delta, Mississippi. And that's a whole other planet. And, uh, and so I was going over there. And so I kept going through these spots where there was no radio. So I was going through the AM radio stations. And I kept finding, and I found this guy, there was this guy preaching on the radio station. And uh, he was what we love him. And I don't, I mean, this loving. He, he's an old, old school camp meeting, wind sucking 
preacher. I'm talking like, let's get and 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 so it took me, it took me about five minutes to to cue in my ears. Right, I was just trying to get going, and he kept saying something I couldn't figure out what he's talking about, because he kept talking about an ounch, and he kept talking about this ounch, and then finally it dawned on me, and then he re- he said the Ethiopian ounch, and I realized he's talking about a eunuch. And he was referring to the passage in Acts about uh, the, the Ethiopian eunuch and God sends him out to, you know, make sure <laughs> to, to, to share the gospel with this guy. And so he's going on and on about this Ethiopian unch. And about how this Ethiopian unch is out in the wilderness and this Ethiopian unch, God knew right where he was. And this Ethiopian unch, God was going to make sure that the gospel got to him. And man, and the gospel gets to that unch. And then he starts going to this part of the story. And I'm dying in my car because he goes, And I tell you what, man, bless God, that unch got saved. And he said, And I tell you what, the first thing that unch did was go home and tell his wife and kids. <laughs> now, If you don't know why that's funny, you can ask Brother Herb after the service and he'll tell you. And uh, (laughs) so anyway, 